So I was just sitting here at the computer, and the Davis went off, and the high wind alarm went off on the Davis. I have mine set to 30 mile per hour. Check this out. See, it's 20 after 3. Two minutes to three, we had a 30 mile an hour wind. Let's go see what we got on the meters. Okay, so we're out here in the garage now. It's uh, 20 after three. And you can see there, 44.29 amps at 687 watts from that gust. So that's pretty good, I think. Almost 700 watts, right? Yeah, I'm, I mean, we're shy of 700. But that's pretty cool, 30 mile an hour. Uh, that is actually past. That actually surpassed uh, the Windy Nation turbine. Another gust. I don't know if you could hear that. But when it gets that kind of... That kind of wind, it starts to chatter. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I don't know why it's doing that, making that uh, sound. I don't know if that's something with the blades, or if it's just really shaking and vibrating up there that much that it's vibrating in place. Which it very well could be, because the dump load is going off right now, and it's not... Uh, yeah, dump load's bouncing up and down like crazy. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. Oh, my hand's in See the gauge right there? You know, it's... No, I ain't doing it now, but... It's a solid state relay hooked up to that. And it dumps into the parts washer, which is a water heater element. Which, I'll have a video coming up on that, too. Some pretty, pretty interesting data I want to show you. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let it cycle. 686.8, I think it was. 44.29 amp peak. Pretty good. I'm impressed. Now if the winds would stay a little bit more steady, I could show you some more power. But uh, I think it's supposed to get even windier tonight. So I think I'll come out here with the Davis and we'll do a... Yeah, I got another meter here too. We'll do a uh, another video. I'll just sit out here and show you the, the power it's generating. See watts. I'm not really concerned with watts. I'm more concerned with voltage and amps, because amps times volts is watts. You could have 400 watts at 12 volts be X amount of amps and have the same amount of wattage at less amps at a higher voltage. So I'm, I'm more concerned with voltage and amps than watts. Watts don't mean crap to me. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to stand out here too long with it. Just wanted to give you that, whatchamacallit. It is freaking cold out here. Yesterday was beautiful. Today it's freezing, literally. It's starting to snow again. I'll see, maybe I'll come out in a little bit. Maybe about an hour I'll come out. I'll see what the winds are doing. And I'll uh, give you an outside view. It'll be windy as hell. So I might have to knock out the audio. But we'll maybe get an outside view of what it's doing. So, there you go. It's been generating pretty much all day today. There's been a few lulls in the wind, but that's about it. 
I mean, and it's, it's dead silent. It's generating 5, 10, 20 amps. I mean, there's a really light hum to it, but it's so light, it's, it's, it's really quiet. It's actually quieter than the Windy Nation turbine. <laughs> so, all right, guys, that's, that's it for now. We'll be back later. Okay, guys, here is the next day. It's been a windy night. The Thermodyne has been producing power all night long. I'm having some coffee, but I just wanted to show you. Today, we had a max wind speed of 31. Yesterday, we had a 30. And that one was actually a pretty consistent 30 for a while. It was like 30, 29, 28, 30, 30, you know. Okay, so let's go see what kind of kind of power we got from the, the Dermadyne. All right, guys. Just wanted to give you a update here on this. As we saw from the Davis, it is <clears throat> early in the morning having my coffee. I uh, just wanted to show you the elapsed data. So it looks like we hit a 50.61 amp peak with 745 watt peak. Pretty good if you ask me. And winds are starting to die out. So yeah. So we just get gusty winds and I mean this thing just power ramps up so fast. Thermodyne, you did an excellent job on blade design and PMA, magnets, copper combination. Did a fantastic job. Did a fantastic job. So anybody out there that you want to get a micro wind turbine and you want something that is going to produce and as far as I'm concerned you have two really good choices out there you can get a Thermodyne or a Windy Nation my Windy Nation has been so good to me I gotta get it back up I don't like the fact that it's sitting on the bench because I've had that turbine the longest and it works really well and this one works really well. These are good turbines. Thermodyne is making a great product here. It's a good quality item. It's, it's, a, it's a good turbine. It's a good investment. And they're dirt cheap. They are dirt cheap. I mean, you can't ask, ask for much more. I mean, you get a turbine that you can mount on a inch and a half schedule 40 or 80 pipe stick it in the air with some proper mounting techniques and charge up batteries or even grid tie it I highly suggest going into batteries and then dumping it into a grid tie inverter as opposed to just relying on a grid tie inverter but especially these garbage china ones they suck I don't even have mine hooked up anymore but uh, nonetheless I mean I am truly impressed by how much power I'm able to extract out of that little tiny, what looks like a, an alternator you'd find under the hood of a Chevy Silverado. <laughs> Basically, I mean, it's a 12 SI case that's just jam-packed full of magnets and copper. And, it, and the way Thermodyne did it, they got it down they got it and now he's coming out with the bigger one damn you bob <laughs> no that's great see that's great i mean if you guys have watched any of my previous videos you know that i'm passionate about things that work as they're supposed to and i will promote the hell out of it if it works the way it's supposed to 
just like I did for Thermo or uh, Wind Windy Nation. That Windy Nation PMA has never let me down. This turbine has not let me down. Now, I can't speak for longevity because obviously I just got it up. The Windy Nation, I could speak for longevity. That, that thing was up with no maintenance whatsoever for over a year. Once I took the high turbine down and I put it up, that was the last time I touched it. And mostly because, you know, I, I really wanted to see how it would handle neglect as far as, you know, lack of maintenance. Not really neglect, but just neglecting maintenance. And it held up pretty good. So now I'm, I'm going to do a similar test with this one. This one's probably going to stay on that tower. And I may throw up another tower for the other one, for the windy. I'd really like to get that one up because that'd just be fun to see it. See them both flying. Now I'm I do have one criticism for Windy Nation. They could do a little better on their blade design, I think. As I just don't think they transfer as much wind power into the turbine as it could. But having said that, they do work. They start up at a low wind speed and they catch as much wind as they are designed to and transferred into the PMA and then into whatever target source you have. So for what it is, it's a good it is a good turbine. I have no complaints of the Windy Nation and as of right now I have absolutely no complaints of this Thermodyne. This thing is freaking impressive. So now that I've rambled, just give you that little update and uh, I think what I'm going to do just for shits and giggles is hook it up to one of these grid tie inverters. Probably the 12 volt one, the 10.8 to 60 volt one just like I did with the Windy Nation or I had it directly going into it I'll show you guys what it can do or what it will do when directly connected to the inverter the grid tie inverter just so that way you have a frame of reference I did it with the Windy I have to do it with this one um, so yeah I guess we'll We'll go from there. So if you guys that are getting into the wind and solar renewable energy realm and you have any questions for me, don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments. I will, uh, I'll answer them the best I can. And if I can't answer that question, especially if it pertains to this particular turbine, Thermodyne will jump in and he'll he'll answer those questions or anybody related to Thermodyne, they'll answer the question for you. And if they don't have the answer, they'll get it for you. They will find a way to get the answer and they'll do the research they need to to get the answer. And as will I. So, all right guys, this will be the last video on this turbine for probably a few days. I, I wanna let some test results kind of come in now and once I get some more done out here as far as uh, moving stuff around, I'll be able to play around with this wiring. I got to get this wiring straightened up. All right, guys, it is windy out. <clears throat> I can't do much about the wind, but I wanted to just kind of give you a really up close look at the Thermodyne Supercore up on the roof. I have my telephoto lens on the camera. Oops. Zoomed all the way out as far as I can. I know it is windy. I apologize for that. I can't. I can't really do anything about the wind. But uh, just to kind of give you an idea, the wind is really light right now. It's coming out of almost the north. No, I'm sorry, northwest. My bad. But uh, here, I'll just give you a quick. You can see that red that's on there. Okay, so there you go. You can see the super core. There's the blade and the hub. You could see the pitch on those blades. And there's the front of it. You can see I didn't paint the hub black. I kept the or I didn't paint the hub white. I kept it black. And you can see the roller bracket. And you can see my terrible wiring job. Right now I'm using uh quarter 20 bolts with um ring terminals on the end of each wire in order to attach the wires to PMA for right now. I'm going to put a weatherproof box up there with a junction terminal in order to properly secure it, but uh, 
Let's see, can I go any farther? No, I maxed out on my zoom. But there you go. You can see the roller bracket is kind of wearing some, or the wheels are wearing some groove grooves into the paint. There you go. Wow, the, the turbine is being very photogenic for me today. Rotating in and out of the direction that I want it to. There you go. There's a backside view. So you can see how the wires come out of the PMA and they splice up directly to my 8 gauge wire. And I have, throughout my entire wire pull for the 8 gauge wire, I have it wrapped in tape every like 2 feet so that way the wires stay together and they don't just like flail all over the inside of the tower and rub and everything. But right now, winds are like 3, 4 mile per hour. There's really not a lot of wind. There's probably a 7 mile an hour gust. Oh, there we go. I hope you could see that. I hope you can hear me still. I can't do much as far as camera shake goes because it's it's not possible. I'm on a really terrible tripod with a 70 to 300 millimeter zoom lens. So it's kind of hard to do all that fun stuff. But uh, So you can see how the, the tower, how I have it bolted together, how the two gusseted plates look it actually looks <laughs> it looks like a professional tower which is awesome I love it but you could see how nicely it tracks in the wind it's quiet it looks good and you can see also the pitch of the PMA you can see how it's the bottom of it is pitched out away from the tower it allows for the wind to deflect over the turbine more or less when it reaches the tip of the blades it's a, it's a pretty unique design, and Bob did a really great job over at Thermodyne. He did a wonderful job on this thing. And I'm not just saying that. You know, if a turbine is a piece of shit that doesn't work the way it's supposed to, or doesn't stay tracking into the wind, I'll tell you. I've told you in the past with other turbines. Just like that shitty high turbine that I had that they fucked me over on. But that's a story for other videos, which I'm sure you could watch. Here we go. Okay, I am freezing my nips off and I'm going back inside. Thanks guys.